was one option on uh, one person's idea of an ultimate bug out vehicle. It's a 1947 uh, float plane. Uh, apparently, these were marketed after the war mainly to World War II pilots who wanted to keep flying and own private aircraft. And uh, so I'm working on another project for a collector here in Portland, Oregon. Uh, kind of a ship in a bottle situation because to mock this thing up and as they're getting all of the parts for it, the wings are put on, and of course it can't, it can't leave with the wings attached. We have to take them off, take it outside, put the wings back on, that sort of a thing. But um, one of the things that the, um, the last owners were looking at on this is using it as a bug out thing where if anything were to happen, you can of course use rivers and large, uh, rivers and lakes as a, as a takeoff and landing area. And then using a plane where it's a bit of a hassle, but you can unbolt the wings. There's kind of a system here for, for taking this apart. Um, you can store it in a relatively safe area. But uh, the restoration process for this has been going on for a few years because one of the big issues you have with any kind of aircraft is that any, any kind of long-term storage really needs to be indoors. And a float plane really shouldn't be stored in the water. You have to get it out of the water and you have to have a facility for that, which uh, we have here. Now, how he got this BMW here, I will never know. I, I don't know. I it can't drive it down the dock, so that's another ship in a bottle situation. But it is an option when somebody is uh, uh, has the facilities and they want to be able to travel. But you know, you know what I also talk about is you got to have prepared locations and facilities for this type of thing and. Uh, I'll show the inside here. Um, so they're going through the restoration process on all of this. And you got to deal with all sorts of regulations on these things when it comes to, you know, what kind of equipment you put in, the engines, whether, you're, you know, you're, you have to have original equipment or fuel injected. You got to get approval for every little thing that gets uh, added to it. And so it's a long, grown out process. And then once you own it, once you have it, You've you've got a uh, you've got to go through approved maintenance on it. For example, I, because I'm not certified to weld on airplanes, I don't do any of the welding work on those. I'll work on the facility, but I won't work on the plane. The um, but it, it's an option, you know, when somebody's looking at this kind of stuff. Uh, right now, they're kind of in the market for another engine, and uh, uh, looking at how this goes. But it's it's. Pretty neat when you when you look at something that was made in 1947, and and because most civil aviation aircraft spend most of their time stored indoors, um, you you have pretty good chances of everything still being okay, and so that's it's one of the options. Now this isn't a jet; this is a housing, and of course the prop. It's a pusher prop uh, situation. Pusher prop planes aren't the best ones to parachute out of because you can, you know, you, uh, you can catch a wind draft and then go up and your parachute can get caught in there or something like that. But the way this is set up, you can almost step out onto this little strut and then jump downward as long as the draft of air doesn't push something upward, which is one of the problems. So one of the reasons usually you don't want to parachute out of a pusher prop plane or have a situation where uh, somebody opens a door that you've got some loose clothing, you know, somebody took their jacket off or something like that, and then it blows back and gets in a prop. So, you, you know, you, just, you don't really want to jump out of it. One of the reasons something like this never became real popular with uh, uh, special operations. If you see a plane like this, it's, it's usually a civilian owner who just wants to get around. Um, the uh, but you know we thought we'd show this is kind of a neat neat setup. Uh, I work off and on for the owner, and kind of interesting how they put the rudder and the rear tail so that when you steer the plane on a taxi mode, it steers the same whether you're whether you're uh, on water or on ground. Uh, kind of interesting way that sets up. And then if you're setting up with let's say lakeside landing. Then what, in order to have clearance for the wings, what you would do is you'd have a, a much more gentle 
boat ramp than what would be normal for, let's say, hooking a boat up behind your pickup truck and dragging it out of the water. So you would probably want a, um, a boat ramp that leads up to a parking lot to another hangar to set up for something like this. And towing it, yeah, that's what I thought. There's no real heavy duty tow hook on the front. There's this thing, which you really don't want to be like dragging a plane around by that. Uh, so it's a little tricky. I think what I was looking at before is you get some, have some guys go down and get some straps onto this thing and then that's how you pull it around. And uh, well, kind of interesting. We'll show a little more if you guys are interested in seeing more video about the airplane.